Hello, everyone. Welcome to Phosphor G. Uh, today is Saturday uh, in the Homa Hackathon. And next, we will be having Ki Jun Lee, who will be presenting voice in doors, uh, sorry, voice in door map service for visual uh, visual impaired persons in the UN. So thank you, Ki Jun. Uh, you can proceed. Right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So thank you for the introduction. So I'd like to present our work uh, of the collaboration between our university and the UN OICT, the colleague Susan Shannon and Sung Su Son. The topic is voice indoor map for visually impaired person in the United Nations. Right. So, uh, could you play the first video, Jos? My name is Suzanne Shanahan, and I am the Chief of the United Nations Enterprise Application Center Americas and an accessibility advocate in the organization. 15% of the world's population, over 1 billion people today, are living with disabilities, and one in four people will experience a disability in their lifetime. Now, as we face the global COVID-19 pandemic, persons with disabilities are being disproportionately affected around the world. In 2019, the Secretary General launched the Disability Inclusion Strategy to strengthen the system-wide inclusion of persons with disabilities. And we are fully committed to making our information services and premises accessible to all. The strategy plays a crucial role in supporting the member states in achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its central promise to leave no one behind. The strategy also supports the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which celebrates human diversity and human dignity. The main message of the convention is that persons with disabilities are entitled to the full spectrum of human rights and fundamental freedoms without discrimination. We have learned that one of the key enablers for accessibility is technology. Never has this been more apparent than in the current COVID-19 pandemic reality, where so much of our lives has shifted from the real world to the virtual world, bringing opportunities for technology to change the way we work and collaborate. We also know that innovative technology that is designed for the 15% of the world's population with some form of disability can also be greatly beneficial for the other 85% that will encounter limits to what they would normally be able to do during some part of the day. The time to work on accessibility is now. Organizations are shifting their mindset towards accessibility as a must have, not a nice to have. And this is why we are so grateful to be working with Professor Lee and his team at Pusan University to work together on an open source initiative for voice indoor map services for visually impaired people as part of our wayfinding indoor navigation initiative. More than 1 million people typically visit the UN headquarters in New York every year. It is the home of the General Assembly and countless events and conferences that support the work of the United Nations and serve the world. It is simply critical that this iconic building and the surrounding premises be accessible to all our visitors and staff, and that they can navigate safely and independently and participate fully in our events. The Voice Indoor Map Service Pilot aims to allow visually impaired people to use their smartphones for step-by-step -step voice navigation throughout the UN facilities. This will create a more inclusive experience at the United Nations for visually impaired people, and it will also lay the groundwork for additional accessibility services in the future. For example, voice navigation for those with mobility impairments, impairments such as wheelchair-friendly routes. We chose headquarters in New York to showcase our prototype in this pilot, but we also plan to offer the solution when finalized to all UN locations around the world in support of the UN Disability Inclusion Strategy. Once again, I would like to thank Pusan University, Professor Lee and his team and mine for their collaboration and contribution to this important work. Thank you. All right, great. All right. Could you switch to 
with my pre. All right. Then uh, I will go to the the technical detail of the of a VIM that we are presenting here. So VIM is basically a, a smartphone application for visual impaired person to provide the indoor map service and navigation service. This is basically uh, composed of three different components. The first one is indoor navigation, uh, indoor positioning, of course, and indoor map and indoor voice instruction. So first of all, uh, before going to the technical detail of these three components, I would like to give an overall idea about the system architecture. Uh, our system, VIM, is composed of two different layers. The, the bottom layer is indoor positioning layer, and the upper layer is a service layer of a VIM application on smartphone. The reason that we divided it into two layers is the indoor positioning solution, are, unfortunately, most of them are proprietary. So we cannot include it into the, our open source software. So we try to uh, decouple it into two different layers and they communicate via a standard interface. That means IPS provide the information about the current location X, Y, and the height using the Z value or flow number and with the heading information and timestamp. That after receiving the current location, uh, the VIM application provide a map service and a voice instruction uh, uh, services. All right. So this is the, the flow plan of the United Nations a headquarter in New York City uh, that we will provide the, the proof of concept uh, test scenario. So we have uh, two entrances here and uh, the first scenario is from the, the entrance to the elevator which connect to the, the ground floor, the, the base one floor to this one and then that head to the, the meeting room and for example the another uh, scenario is from the meeting room to the restroom. So we are trying to, to apply our VIM solution for these three different scenarios. All right, so I'd like to explain uh, the technical detail of the three components one by one. First of all, of course, uh, indoor positioning system is uh, the most uh, critical one. So we are using hybrid approach uh, with the Wi-Fi signal strength and geomagnetic sensor and Beacon and even PDR. So we are combining all these methodology for provide an accurate uh, indoor positioning system. But this is a very difficult one and the, the accuracy depends on the site and the environment such as if we have a parabolic antenna, it may disturb the, 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 the field of geomagnetic sensor and actually it gives a, a decrease, a degrade of the the accuracy anyway. So in order to provide more accurate uh, uh, position, we installed the sorry, seven beacons on B1 floor and 79 beacons on first to floor, ground floor like this one. But during the, the deployment, uh, we have the, the pandemic situation. So we firstly introduced the deploy the beacons uh, two years back uh, at the end of 2019, but due to the pandemic situation, the, the deployment of the site was, uh, has been delayed and suspended. So during that period, all the batteries are run out. So this is a quite a serious challenge for the maintenance anyway. And the second part is an indoor map. So the requirement of indoor map is to provide first the information about the indoor cell. The cell means like a room or the, the restroom or corridor, etc. And we provide the, we need the geometry of each cell and the utilization or functions of each cell, whether it is a 
the classroom or office room, etc. And we need also the information about the doors and elevator and stairs which connect uh, uh, the two different cells. For example, via doors, we connect to cells and elevator, we connect to different floors. And the next one we need is a navigation networks. So of course, it is very critical for uh, path planning. And it includes not only horizontal connection, but also vertical connection to connect to different floors. And the last POI, so like a landmark and safety POI. Uh, in order to satisfy this requirement, we decided to use indoor GML, which is a, a indoor uh, spatial standard published by OGC. And this is uh, the, the workflow, how we, uh, how we use indoor GML to provide the service. For example, giving uh, the starting point and ending point, we compute the optimal path using the network information of Indo GML. The optimal path, it, it is not necessarily a shortest path, but also uh, some path satisfying several constraints for visual impaired person. Then uh, with an optimal path and the current uh, position data from indoor positioning solution, we can compute, we can dynamically uh, generate the voice instruction on the fly. So this is the overall uh, the workflow of the VIM application. Then I'd like to, to give a more detailed information about the explanation about the voice instruction. Voice instruction is um, classified into three categories. The first one is uh, instruction for navigation. That means turn by turn instruction. And the second one is uh, POI instruction. And the third one is uh, current location inf instruction. Sometimes we need the information about where you are exactly. For the first one, the turn by turn instruction or navigation instruction, the basic idea is we divide the, the whole path into a segment. And for each segment, we provide the three types of instruction. For example, if you are at the starting point of a, a segment, then we give the starting instruction like go forward 10 meters. And if we are approaching to the end of the, the segment, then for example, two meters ahead, we provide a preparing instruction like stop at two meters ahead so that the user can uh, ready to stop. And if he or she arrived to the point where he should make a turning, then he uh, we provide uh, instruction for like uh, stop and turn to three o'clock. So this is a normal case. The basic idea is we uh, divide the whole route into a set of uh, segment and for each segment, we provide uh, these three uh, instruction. But sometimes the segment could be too short to include the three uh, instruction, then we may simplify it to two instruction or even one instruction. And sometimes the user may deviate too much from a given segment, then we provide a, a correction segment, such as a warning segment and correction segment and restarting segment. And for the POI instruction, this is very simple. For example, if you are here and if you want to provide a, a POI instruction, then you may give the instruction like uh, POIC at four meters to three o'clock. That is quite simple. And the, the, the final instruction is uh, the information instruction about the current location. That could be uh, dependent on the, uh, the case. For example, if you are on the way uh, to, the, to the, the end of the segment, then you may give the instruction like four meters from B to A, uh, sorry, A to B. And if you are on exactly on A spot, then you may say that you are at spot C. And the same way, if you are at the intersection point, you may a similar instruction. Okay, and one thing that you have to bear in mind is uh, how to name node and path. This is quite an uh, important one. So the first principle is we have to make uh, uh, the name as short as possible because the time interval is a 
the most precious resource for VIM service. We may not include many instructions for a given interval. So we have to make it as short as possible. And for naming a node, uh, that should be meaningful. Like uh, if you have a name, precise name, like a visiting center entrance or security checkpoint, that could be a name of a node. And naming path, uh, even though it is composed of uh, several different segments, it would be better to uh, aggregate it into one single uh, path. And you may give the name like from visitor center to checkpoint. All right, and we have a quite an interesting challenge for voice instruction. That means the scheduling issues. Then when we have uh, too many instructions in a given interval, then we should avoid the overlapping between instruction. That means we need a proper scheduling. Proper scheduling means we have to consider the priority and we have also considered the spatiotemporal validity. Spatiotemporal validity is for example, if you are here, then you may give an instruction like uh, kiosk is at 10 o'clock, but the, the user is moving ahead. So the, the, the instruction is at some point no longer valid. That means for any instruction, there is a spatiotemporal validity. So we have to consider this spatiotemporal validity for uh, proper scheduling. Right, so I'd like to show the, the video uh, that we developed. Could you play the second video, please? <clears throat> Go 23 meter, 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 meter forward. Warning, a revolving door is located at four o'clock so and three the steps. of the United Nations building, <clears throat> sorry. Go 18 we meter just forward. The, the instruction that he received from the smartphone. Turn 10 o'clock. Go 6 meter forward. Stop at 3 meter ahead. Turn 3 o'clock. Turn 3 o'clock. Go 41 meter forward. <laughs> he is not very familiar with VIM, so he is a little bit confused with the instruction, but Go 33 meter uh, forward. We have to do is for providing such uh, application, the user should be a little bit. A portraits uh, of the Secretary uh, General's is located at trained. four o'clock and zero step. Go 21 meter forward. And uh, something like that. So after that the training, I think. Uh, Go 12 the meter forward. A portraits of the Secretary the General's is located at three o'clock and zero step. Okay, so because Stop of the at time three limit, meter ahead. I would like to continue my presentation. A portraits of the Secretary General's is located at four o'clock and four step. All right, thank you. And right. So this is a quite a short example of the demonstration at the site of UN headquarters. All right, so as a summary, uh, I gave a short presentation of a voice indoor map service, uh, and we are carrying out uh, conducting a pilot uh, proof of concept at UN headquarters. And the source code is available at this uh, GitHub site. It is in Java, and this one is uh, Android version. That means we need to port to, to iOS. But anyway, this application is quite the early stage and we need the housekeeping and we need some of the, uh, the work for stabilizing it. That means uh, we need your contribution. So even though we initiate this uh, application, if you can participate to our 
uh, development and deployment. That would be very appreciated. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your talk, Kiyo. Mm -hmm. It was the demo was very impressive. We can proceed with the questions now. Yep. So, first one, uh, do we need to install any infrastructure for Beam other than beacons? Yeah. So, uh, the so this is uh, the question about the indoor positioning. Uh, we need, of course, the the beacon if it is possible. So, but for beacon, we need the maintenance issues. That means. Uh, uh, for every two years, for example, we have to change the battery and we have to regularly check whether some beacons are dead or not. This is a maintenance issue. And the second one is for if you have a quite a dangerous area that we have to, to care about, then we need a little bit more additional, for example, device which give the arm warning message to user. For example, at the UN site, uh, if you have in there, so you may find uh, several uh, bank of elevators. The first bank is to lower, lower floors and the second one is uh, high floors. But the distance between low, the bank one and bank two is not sufficiently uh, uh, far away. That is a little bit of uh, five meters, but five meters sometimes the, it is uh, difficult to, to keep the accuracy on the five meters by some IPS in the positioning. Then we need uh, some additional things to 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 provide more uh, accurate uh, the, the 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 positional data. So that is uh, something that we need as an uh, infrastructure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next question will be. Beam is actually for visually impaired persons. Is there any plan to extend it to other types of impairment? Yep. So, uh, uh, the, the Susan at the beginning of the the presentation, he she explained a little bit the, the our big picture. So the first one is of course uh, uh, after the proof of concept at the uh, UN headquarter for. Uh, the ground floor and B1 floor, if it would be successful, then we will uh, apply it to the whole UN building. And then the UN has a lot of places in the world like Geneva or uh, Entebbe. We may apply the same thing to each place of the United Nations. And then, of course, as you mentioned, uh, like, uh, for example, the person of a wheelchair, the, the person of a uh, reduce the mobility. We may different. We may develop different type of uh, the navigation service for indoors. So this is uh, uh, basically our plan. But anyway, we have to uh, finish our development for the first step. This is very important uh, mission so far. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, the last question we have is. The accuracy of indoor positioning may affect the quality of the service. What, what is the requirement of accuracy for being serviced for visually impaired persons? Yep, uh, that is also a very uh, interesting question. So uh, the, the visually impaired person, they, they move with sometimes with the guide dog or the cane. So they have some, some device to detect, uh, they help uh, the user to navigate in the indoor space. But so the VIM is a, a kind of additional uh, solution for the navigation that provide the information about the turning and the POI. So if you don't have any very dangerous uh, location like just just next, if you have uh, stairs, then that would be very dangerous. So uh, considering this kind of uh, uh, danger, uh, we have to uh, carefully design the accuracy of the indoor positioning. If you don't have such kind of danger, then the uh, sufficient uh, indoor accuracy, maybe position accuracy, maybe like uh, three or five meters, three meters would be okay. 
But if for some special case like that I explained for the elevator bank case or a danger place, then we need to improve uh, the indoor in the positioning accuracy of of indoor space. So that is and the 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 technology of indoor positioning is very rapidly uh, developing. So for example, we are uh, in the near future, we may have a solution for 5G. That would be a very promising approach. And also uh, ultra wideband, which is also a very interesting approach for indoor positioning. So if we may have that kind of solution, we dramatically improve the accuracy of indoor positioning, then that would be very sufficient, I think. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We are we have fun of out of time, so I think that we will have to end here. Thank you very much for your talk and coming to Phosphor G and presenting it. All right. Hi. Bye bye. We will be bye. seeing you around. Bye bye. All right, and the next talk by Lorenzo Natalie, Map Store Agile in Review will start in five minutes. See you soon. <laughs>